Acid-base imbalances are one of the trickiest and most prominent questions you may have on the step if you don't know how to tackle them. If not, some of the easiest ones. So the way I look at it is you have these three values that you need to look at, and they are bicarbonate, you have CO2, and you have pH, right? This is the order that I look at it. Why? So no, notice this is basic, by the way. This is acidic. When you look at, if, you, if we were to look at the CO2 in the body, we would have no idea whether the cause is primary or secondary. We wouldn't know if the problem is in the kidneys or if the problem was primarily in the lungs. Whereas if we look at CO2 first, usually this takes longer to show a change if it had started off respiratory. It takes like tw over 24 hours to change this. So if there's a change here, you know it's most probably going to be a primary scenario. So we look for the CO2 value first and see if there's anything wrong with it. Secondly, we look at the CO2 to see if there's been a change in this as well. And lastly, we look at the pH. So let's say in the case of vomiting, for example, these are different scenarios that also show up. So vomiting, you need to think about what are you losing. So you're losing protons and you're losing chloride, HCl, which is the acidity, the acid in your stomach. So these things are acidic, right? So what would you expect to be having? Since you're losing acidic, you would be expecting to have a metabolic alkalosis plus you're dehydrated, right? So you're going to have hypokalemia. Why? Well, you need to commit to memory right now that blood pressure and um, potassium are usually opposites. Think about it as like the sodium pump, you know, they're going in different directions. So I usually always associate them as opposites. So if you are giving one of them, you can kind of work your way into assuming the other, which is very helpful for the test. Now, if you have somebody who has diarrhea, what are they losing? They're losing bicarbonate, which is basic. So the opposite's going to happen. They're going to have a metabolic acidosis. Plus, they're going to be dehydrated, so you're going to have hypokalemia. Be why? Because, again, when you're losing a lot of water, you're going to have more sodium in your blood. And if you have a high sodium, you have a high blood pressure, meaning you'll have low uh, potassium. That's just the easiest way uh, to look at it, in my opinion. And um, also, again, just to kind of explain this scenario again, if you have low CO2, Let's say in the example of you're um, at a high altitude or you're having a panic attack and you, your, your patient's just hyperventilating, just breathing in and out too much. They're breathing out so much CO2 that now their pH is going to be basic, meaning it's going to be high. That's a simple way to look at it. And since it's such an acute respiratory problem, there should not be a change in bicarbonate. So here in your first step, there shouldn't be a change. But then the second step, you do see a change. So that gives away that this is a problem in the lungs. So, whereas here, if you start off with this one and you see a change, you will see, um, and you see a change in CO2 as well. This is most likely because it is a metabolic problem. Okay, it's in the kidneys. Um, most likely, you need to evaluate the scenario. So again, if it's um, kind of like less than 24 hours, very safe to assume that it's going to be metabolic. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them in the comments. Thank you.